Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you a Partner Commander Primer. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the affiliate link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable list of the cards that we'll be talking about in this video in the description below that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Today I will be going through our first ever Partner Commander Primer, which is a new form of deck tech where we take a Partner Commander and we share some possible synergies, powerful cards, and potential partners that you could have with that Commander. For this video, we'll be talking about Rebecca, Architect of Ascension. Rebecca is a legendary creature, human artificer. She's a 3-4 that costs 3 and a white. She says, artifacts you control have protection from each converted mana cost among artifacts you control. And she has partner. Rebecca is a new white artifact commander. So you're primarily going to want to have a lot of artifact synergy in your deck. So let's go over some of the cards that synergize really well with the partner, no matter what partner that you put her with. And then we'll go over some additional synergies that you'll have, potential partners, and five possible strategies that you could take with this commander. Getting started with the top 10 most synergistic cards, when putting together a list of the cards that would go well with this commander, I thought of two things. Generally, good artifact spells and cards that specifically benefit from Rebecca's ability. This effect seems to be more of a control piece that prevents your opponents from doing certain things with your artifacts, so we'll go along with the control theme as something that you can add to your decks in general. I will put a disclaimer here that these may not necessarily be the absolute best cards for whatever strategy you end up doing. These are just something worth considering because they get a little bit better with Rebecca on the battlefield. The first one is Mycosynth Lattice. This is a more expensive card now. It's an artifact that costs six that basically makes all of the permanent on the battlefield artifacts and everything in your hand colorless and players can spend mana as it, though it were any color. This will make everything on your board an artifact. At the very least, that gives all of your things protection from, from the cumulative converted mana costs of all of your permanents. And so you're for sure protected from things of four, six, and zero converted mana costs because of your lands. And you know that you're going to have other things on the battlefield that are going to help that as well. And this protects everything that you have. So the, it gives them protection from everything of those converted mana costs. And it's, it works really, really well with Rebecca. Next, we have Aether Sworn Canonist, which is an artifact creature human cleric that costs one and a white and says each player who has cast a non-artifact spell this turn can't cast additional non-artifact spells. This is one of the best pillow fort stacks sort of pieces for white artifact decks. This is just really great because it's basically a one-sided stacks piece. You're going to be casting a lot of artifacts and not a lot of non-artifacts. And so having Aethersworn Canonist on the battlefield is really nice and it gets some extra protection, especially from those more common removal spells around the two to three CMC range. That's mostly what you're looking for for protection. Aether Sworn Canonist just adds another layer of protection so that not as much can be removed on your board. Next, I have Trusty Pack Beast and Mirror Retriever. Trusty Pack Beast is not an artifact, but when it enters the battlefield, you return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. And Mirror Retriever says when he dies, return another target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but white is really good at recurring cards from your graveyard, especially artifacts. And so these two cards are almost a must have in here. Trusty Pack Beast is not alone in its ability. There are lots of other options. Again, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but these two are worth considering if you're playing Rebecca. Next, we have Joyra's Familiar and Foundry Inspector, both of which make your artifact spells cost one less to cast, with the added bonus of Joyra's Familiar making your legendary creatures cost less, which means both of your commanders will cost less. So, on top of that, they're both artifacts, so they're contributing to that three and four converted mana cost protection, and these are going to make your artifact spells much easier to cast and 
help accelerate your game plan in almost every deck that you're going to have Rebecca in. Next, I have Walking Ballista, which might seem like a strange choice because its converted mana cost is zero, and we're really not protecting from a lot of converted mana cost zero spells. There simply aren't a lot of spells with converted mana cost zero that are threatening us. So the reason why I've included Walking Ballista is because the protection that Rebecca gives to Walking Ballista makes your Walking Ballista combos go much smoother and makes it really hard to interact with certain combos that you can do with Walking Ballista. So in general, the kinds of artifact decks that you'll be building can be geared more towards Walking Ballista win con because of Rebecca's ability. Next, we have Hope of Jirapur, which I'm including here because I was looking for something that cost one mana that was really good and kind of synergized with Rebecca and was an artifact. And Hope of Jirapur seemed to be the one that made the most sense. It says, sacrifice Hope of Jirapur until your next turn. Target player who was dealt combat damage by Hope of Jirapur this turn can't cast non-creature spells. So it's a lot like Aethersworn Canonist, where it's preventing your opponents from casting certain kinds of spells and interacting with your board and it's just another way to protect your board but also it only costs one mana and it's going to protect you from some of the more efficient removal that you can see from your opponents. Next I'm including Icker Wellspring which I feel like is a bit of an underrated card. It costs two, and it says when it enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. And there are a lot of things in artifact decks that can result in lots of card draw, and Icar Wheelspring is definitely one of the best ones. I would definitely recommend considering putting this in the deck, especially if you're running some sort of recursion like White is so good at, and can take advantage of this multiple times. And then the last one is kind of an out there kind of recommendation, so take it with a grain of salt, but I've included all that glitters in this list. It's an enchantment aura that costs one and a white. It says enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. With the amount of artifacts that you're going to be playing, this can just pump up one of your creatures tremendously, and it can even pump up your commander. It's already a three four, which is a pretty good body for a commander. But maybe your partner commander has some sort of a combat damage effect or or wants to be attacking a lot. And so having all that glitters in there will help you get that commander damage win con as well. Now, let's briefly talk about some of the th sub themes that you can do with Rebecca. The biggest one that stood out to me, as I've mentioned previously, is that the mono white artifacts deck tends to have a lot of graveyard recursion. That's the best thing that white can do for artifacts typically, so whatever strategy you end up choosing, look into cards that will help you recur your artifacts and benefit from recurring your artifacts. The best ones that I've found for returning artifacts from your graveyard are Tishar, Ancestor's Apostle, Treasure Hunter, and Scarecrone, all of which have unique abilities that work a little bit differently depending on your playstyle. To take advantage of them, oftentimes you need some sort of a sacrifice outlet for artifacts, such as Cart Clan Ironworks, and some kind of payoff for recurring them, such as Mirror Moon Vessel. You can also use them to cheat out big artifact spells that will help you close out the game. Really, there's a lot of really useful artifacts out there, and you should pick the ones that are most useful to the strategy that you've chosen, but make sure you include some artifact recursion in there because White is really good at that, and Rebecca brings that to the table. The next section is about potential partners, and unfortunately we're in the middle of spoiler season and aren't aware of all of the possible partner commanders that are out there yet. So I will be primarily going off of the partners that we've already seen spoiled and the partners that have already been printed in previous sets. If you have a partner commander that you're really excited about that was revealed after I recorded this episode, please share it in the comments and I would love to see what your ideas are. The first one I've written down is might be a little bit obvious to all of you, but it's Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. He is a legendary artifact creature human. He costs one, a blue, and a black, and he's a 2-2 with death touch, and he says whenever Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, deals combat damage to a player, choose target artifact in your graveyard, you may cast that this turn. So on that same theme of graveyard recursion, you can get that same sort of graveyard recursion and protection from both of your commanders. So you can have a artifact centered deck that is Esper, which is really good for artifacts typically, and have your commanders there as more of a support piece than the main driver of the deck. 
So I feel like Silas Wren and Rebecca work really, really well together in that regard. Next is Krom Ludovic's Opus, which actually doesn't have a lot to do with artifacts, but it is blue and red. And blue, red, white artifacts seems like it would be a good combination to work together, especially with graveyard recursion options that are in red already and just the general artifact synergy that is in blue. Krom does also offer some card advantage, so if you can get him out onto the battlefield and just let him sit there, or maybe even protect him with some of your artifacts, then that will help you accelerate your game plan as well. And the last potential partner that I will recommend is Keskit the Flesh Sculptor, which was just revealed yesterday. Keskit is a legendary creature human artificer. He costs two and a black, and he's a one three, so your deck would be an Orzov deck. And he says, tap, sacrifice three other artifacts and or creatures, look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them into your hand and the other one into your graveyard. So what he does for Rebecca is not only fuel the graveyard with lots of artifacts that can be target for recursion, that the recursion that we keep on talking about that White offers, but it also gives some draw synergy. It draws you two cards every time that you are able to sacrifice a whole bunch of artifacts. And so if you're playing Casket, I would recommend going kind of an aristocrat theme, but also with artifacts. So make lots of clue tokens, for instance, and just generally feed off of that graveyard recursion strategy that White is so good at and Orzov in general is pretty good at. All right, in our last section, let's theorize five possible strategies that you could take with this commander. This is just to get your head turning about the possibilities with Rebecca and to be thinking about what partners this would pair well with and what kind of deck you want to be building. The first one and most obvious one is just white artifact recursion payoffs. You could go a mono white deck with Rebecca with another mono white partner commander and just get so much value from the artifact recursion that that you have something similar to a to Shar deck where you're casting lots of artifact spells and then returning ones from your graveyard get some loops going with mirror retriever and other things and generally just get the benefit off of lots of artifacts moving between your battlefield and your graveyard. The next strategy is just an Esper combo strategy, specifically if you pair up with Silas Wren. There are lots of options with artifacts that you can do for combos. If you want to see any of those, go check out Landon's Brea video. But specifically, Esper has a lot of combo potential, and doing things like a Walking Ballista combo, or a Time Sieve combo, or a Thopter Foundry combo is super easy in Esper colors, and you're going to get a lot of value from having those two partners as your commander. The third strategy is the Heliod Ballista combo, and I kind of alluded to it earlier. Heliod Ballista is really popular right now because of the recent release of Heliod Sun Crown from... Theros Beyond Death. If you aren't aware of this combo, basically Heliod gives Walking Ballista lifelink, and then whenever you remove a counter from Walking Ballista to deal damage to something, you gain a life, and then Heliod's other ability gives Walking Ballista a plus one plus one counter every time that happens. You can infinitely ping your opponent and gain that much life and end the game very quickly. And, and it's pretty efficient too. There isn't a lot of mana that you need to get this off. Rebecca works really well for this strategy because one, it really only requires mono white and, and you could pair like a black one there to get your tutors going. And Rebecca works to protect the walking ballista from any threats that could come its way. So the third strategy is Jeskai artifacts. And this is th the extension of me thinking about the Krom pairing with Rebecca. Specifically, there are just a lot of really synergistic blue, red, and white artifact spells. And red and white are really good at recurring artifacts, and blue is just good with generally having artifacts. And so if you can get something going with those artifacts, it's not a fully fleshed out idea, but I believe that Rebecca and Krom work really well work really well to make that work. And then last, I have Sacrifice, and this is most likely going to be your Keskit pairing, 
but it could be uh, with any of the other ones that have black in their mana cost. Since white is really good at recurring artifacts, you could get something that is really good at getting rid of artifacts or, or milling your artifacts, sacrificing your artifacts, something to help feed some sort of an engine and get some recursion. And and I know that sounds a lot like the first strategy that I listed, the, the mono white artifact recursion, but this is specifically like more of an aristocrat strategy. And I feel like Rebecca would work really well with that. All right, that is it for our first ever partner commander primer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, you can support us directly by signing up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley. We're brewing up all of these spoiled commanders all day long, and it's a really fun time to be interacting with the community and thinking of all of the possibilities that can come out of Commander Legends. We have a Discord, we have merch, we have other exclusive content. Just go and check it out. Thank you to Game Grid Lehigh for sponsoring this video and all of our videos on this channel. If you go to that link in the description, that's an affiliate link and it will help support the channel. They ship nationwide, so go get your card singles there, go get your new Commander Legends products there. It helps the channel a lot to see that people are going there and supporting Game Grid. So thank you to Game Grid for all of their support. We have live streams every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Join us for some brawl on Arena and follow us on social media. We're on Twitter and Facebook posting about all of our videos as they come out. So thank you again for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe and look forward to much more Commander Legends content coming out in the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you.